Yes, we're going to bring you all the latest news that's going on. We're going to start off with a little bit of breaking. We were talking about this lady named Anjali earlier on in the show with our guest Sinead Willihan about this lady who claims that she has ET contact. She has talked to members of the alien nation and is going to meet them in a cave somewhere in the United States, putting a team together. And there's been a lot of criticism about her recently, John, and whether or not she's the real deal or whether she is just a snake oil saleswoman when it comes to ET contact. But another talk show host busted her on something good here. Yeah, and and this one, oh, first off, hello everyone. Uh, th thanks for listening. Um, yeah, no, this one really surprised me because this was not a, a, a normal gotcha. You know, I mean, this wasn't like some like cloak and dagger thing going on um, because uh, she had basically said, you know, in I believe it was like her second interview or and I think it was twice uh, on Clubhouse that she mentioned the fact that she was working on a book and uh, people even went out to Amazon and found the, the pre-order for it you know and so a, a lot of us already knew this and i guess in um in a uh, a twitter conversation the other day um someone uh, asked her about that and she basically responded with i'm not writing a book not i'm no longer writing a book not i've paused my book not i tried to write a book but gave up just point blank i am not writing a book and so yeah steven uh uh uh, is it Chamblin or Shamblin? I, I, I Cambian. It's Chamblin. Cambian. Uh, Cambian. Cam oh, Cambian. Thank you. Um, and he just right. He just responds to it just lickety split. You know. Uh, well, you were. Why the flip flop with a screenshot of the actual pre order uh, on her of her book on Amazon? And um, and I didn't see her respond to that whatsoever. Um, and uh, and so yeah. So it was it was a weird thing because it wasn't it was it wasn't. Like there's a lot of things people can get caught on easily, and sometimes they're honest mistakes. This one was like, this was this was almost like, uh, like you had two different people. You know, like how could you forget that you were writing a book if it was already a pre-order on Amazon? You know, um, it's uh, it's 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 troubling. It's it's just it's it's troubling um, because I mean I have some people who kind of stuck their necks out for her when they looked into her military background. You know, and if she ends up being a fraud, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people going to be hurt by that, you know, as you said before, you know, it's, um, you know, and, and who knows, I mean, her story could be half right and half wrong. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is that I've been very disappointed by the way she's been treated on Twitter. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if she's, you know, crazy. It doesn't matter if she's honest. It doesn't matter if she's telling the truth. It doesn't matter if she's completely full of it. She deserves respect she deserves um consideration she deserves you know uh some amount of empathy and, and and some amount of compassion and uh you know everyone is you know is sane until proven otherwise and so uh, i've been very disappointed about how she's been treated she has not been treated right i'll no. guarantee that yeah yeah it's, that, it's been... that's not but that's not the issue for a lot of people the fact Correct. is she she trots out this this illustrious press conference in front of uh, of front of media, most of them not even mainstream or even fringe journalists, but a bunch of bloggers and vloggers who uh, want to get into you know the whole fact that she's in Washington D.C. in front of the Lincoln Memorial and talking about aliens. She gets wheeled out in a wheelchair when everybody knows she can walk, you know, and, and there's scarves and and she's got her head covered and and really playing up the entire guru type type of, of ploy here. And, you know, as an experiencer myself, as I said earlier, and I'm going to go off on this uh, tomorrow a little bit, I do, believe, I do believe that she has experienced something. Yeah, but to, I, I, but to yeah. try and be the face of the franchise, when number one, nobody asked you to, okay, and number two, John, most experiencers are very much in the closet about everything that they have gone through. And I think it's very tough to swallow the fact that she has made a media and social media spectacle of herself where it is not very, very uh, 
professional, shall we say. Now, hey, I, I'll be the first one to admit, if she has a leg injury or something along those lines, she should be in a wheelchair. Sure. Okay. I mean, but but anything, every other yeah. I mean, every other possible. Yeah. Every other video that we have seen of her, every other video that she has spoken and, and everything, uh, she ha she is, seems to be walking fine. And and it just seems like it was part of the the spectacle brigade, and it just wasn't. And and you know what? I I spoke quite uh, politically incorrect there for a second. So let me clarify this: the chair that she was wheeled in on was filled with scarves and pillows, almost like they were trying to build a a guru's type chair for her. It wasn't that she was wheeled in in a hospital wheelchair that no. somebody may no. use coming out of a hospital or somebody with paralysis or something along that line. So let's, let's just be clear yeah. on that. Uh, no, I, okay. and it's good I of you to make that point, Dave. And, you're right. yeah. To, yeah. 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 and I don't want to offend anybody by that comment who took my words there wrong. Okay. But there's just something yeah. of this spectacle that just does not. It looked out of sort. It, it really looked out of sort. And, and, uh, and, you know, and the other thing I will say too, is that, you know, there's, there's all, you know, there's all these things in this, in this, um, in this research facility environment where there's these oddities, right? There's these odd coincidences that may mean nothing, right? Or they may mean something, you know, you take the fact that Lou Elizondo was a counterintelligence person, right? That that's challenging for some people, right? But in her case, if you believe her professional past, she specifically focused on manipulation through social media, right? I mean, that, that was one of her core skill sets that she actually taught was, was how to do, you know, I mean, it, it's not, it's not called manipulation through social media. They have a more professional name for it. But if you read the description of what she taught and, and what she specialized in, it was basically, you know, uh, uh, you know, impacting large groups of people through social media. And that's a really unfortunate expertise to have if you're going to be doing what she's doing. Yeah, there, and you know what? And if she does have a health condition, I completely take my words back. Okay, but yeah, there's sure. a lot yeah. of there's a lot of stories rolling around about her that nobody seems to be true. She's changed her name three or four times before settling on Anjali. I mean, it just everything just seems. A, a little fraudulent here. And, and I think putting that on the experiencers who are trying really hard to get people to take their stories and their anecdotal evidence seriously, I think this gives a black eye to everything. I really do. And, and that, that to me is the, is the, it's almost the best point in all this in that essentially if, if, if the experiencers had a narrative, right, if, 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 if that side of the, if that side of the house actually had someone coordinating this, you would take her and shift her back to the schedule three years <laughs> and say, you know what, we'll deal with that later. Because right now we have a bunch of people with much cleaner stories and are, you know, are, are much, you know, tighter and, and, and so forth. And they deserve a chance to present in a, in a cleaner light. And, you know, we don't need that to, you know, to, to cause any extra challenge challenges, consider challenges that already exist for these poor people, you know? Look, one other thing I want to say about this before we let this go. I know a lot of people are going to criticize me over this. They're going to say, look, Dave, you've had experiences. You got zero proof. So you you tote some and highly tout Samantha Mowat, and we don't have proof of hers. With experiencers, you have to be very careful. The majority of the experiencers are not coming out waving a magic wand, and I'm not saying that Anjali is, but saying, follow me, I'm the one who has all the answers, I'm the one who's going to bring and expose the extraterrestrials, I'm going to be the one who discloses. We don't see that with other experiencers. That's why I'm very hesitant, you know, and I'll be honest with you, the same feeling I had about the To The Stars Academy, where I told my listeners way back when, be very careful of this group. I got that same feeling once again with Anjali, and I could tell you, and I will say this with pride, I'm very rarely wrong in those situations. No, very but I think you bring up a, a really strong point, and I had to remind myself of this, and that is that you, you can't just look at the context of her story and say, okay, 
for some reason that's not believable to me. Therefore, I'm going to throw the whole thing out because there are several other people that have much crazier stories, and and some of them are very believable and might actually be true. And so you can't, you know, you have to consider the fact that everyone has these these really. Um, amazing stories, and so you you do have to be very careful how you measure them and and how you and how you consider them, and yeah. and everyone has to make their own personal judgment. Yeah, I believe she's an experiencer. Don't get me wrong, I think she's experienced something. I I put more of the blame on the on the people who have made her present it this way. I think she's listened to the wrong people. And what she's experienced, we don't know. But we're going to find out more about it. I'll go off on it tomorrow on Dave 101 on the show. I want to talk to you quickly about it, maybe spend a minute on this. But uh, the the long-time coming UAP Expeditions, the team with Kevin Day, Gary Voorhees, J Jeremy McGowan, and everybody, they've been trying for a past year or so to get everything going for a documentary and potentially a television series. And one of the big players in that field is an agent and a friend of this show. So I, I do have to disclose that of Dave Altman. And yesterday the group fired Altman, their agent over a disruption within the team. What do you know about this? Uh, so this is incredibly unfortunate. And, um, the, the only bit of, of, of knowledge that I, that I personally have is that, um, I did see, um, a, a, a Twitter, um, a thread done by, by Altman where he was basically, um, he, he initially came out saying that, um, that, um, uh, another individual within the organization had, um, evidently threatened to sue him if he presented, this information he had that made this individual look bad. And he proceeded to uh, post one of those items. And needless to say, if you present it in that matter, it, it, it causes everyone uh, on the list to then uh, start enticing you to give more. And so you can create this feedback loop that encourages you to do even something you know you shouldn't. And so he released more and more info. And what it looked like to me was, internal um, discussions that went on between um, uh, Altman and this other individual and possibly other people. And these were internal discussions and um, they'd been screenshotted and, um, and they were being posted to Twitter. And uh, I'm not saying that the behavior in them was correct. I'm not saying that anyone was right or wrong, but it did catch me by surprise that someone who had been taking screenshots of a private conversation and was then posting them on Twitter. That to me caught my attention. And so I think it's very possible that it's because things were not handled internally within the organization and instead it was it was published uh, on Twitter. But I have no I have no direct knowledge that that's actually what, what happened. But in light of everything that I've heard, that's how I'm personally piecing it together at this point. Well, let's hope that that show goes off and hopefully there's a bunch of good people on both sides of that equation and let's hope that and some really good information they've gotten some some incredible results that they can't talk about yet that i really want everyone to find out about and it, it's it's important stuff and it out so i completely agree with you okay quickly here we're going to have to uh, get to a couple more here before we got to let you go there yeah, is yeah. there is a gentleman named marshall summers that you feel we need to bring attention to with a disturbing message from aliens? Yeah. So first off, I'll provide the links. Everyone, please, please, please watch watch what what Joe Merger did on this. He covers the the dialogue very clearly. But to give a, a quick recap, basically, a Marshall is a uh, is an American uh, re religious figure. I, I don't know exactly what what position he held, but he's he's an American theology type person. And um, evidently, somewhere around thirty something years ago, um, he was contacted, um, being told that, that he was they wanted to use him as as a messenger of some sort. He didn't like the message. He didn't want to hear it. He ignored it. He blew it off. Um, they came to him again, uh, uh, you know, in the last couple of years. And um, they gave him what I, my understanding is 900 pages of content, which he has published in multiple books. 
And I don't know the exact nature of his contact. I don't know all the details of it. And I, I'm not putting any judgment on whether the contact is reliable or not. The reason why I think it's important to bring out is that what this group that he talked to claims is that they are a, a, a group that does not want to contact us directly because they don't think we should be contacted. They don't think we're ready yet. And they're very concerned about the ones that are contacting us. And they think that the ones that are contacting us might not have our best intentions at heart. And it's not that this is the correct message. Whether it is or not, it's up to everyone else to, to judge. But what it brings to our attention and should bring to our attention is we need to get rid of this fantasy that there's one person out there. There could be multiple groups and there's no proof that they're coordinated, they get along, or they're adversarial. And we have to watch out for that. Same message as Anjali and many others out there, seriously. And, and that's not a shot there, but a lot of experiencers seem to have that same message. That That's pretty incredible. Finally tonight, I want to get to this quickly because we do have to hit with the Department of Defense has a briefing card on UAP. Yeah, so basically this is a, a briefing card is basically something that gets given out uh, as a, as a this, is, this is what's safe to say. Okay, this, that's what it is. This is the PR generated thing that says, if you have to talk to the press, this is what you're allowed to say, right? And so basically what it is, is it's a briefing card on the UAP report to Congress. And it was John Greenwald that got this through a, a, a FOIA process. And so please go to his site and check it out. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 there's nothing particular that was like, ooh, got you, you know, sort of a thing. But it was very, very interesting just to, it's, it's four pages and it's, um, it's, it's really worth everyone reading because this is what they wanted to present to the public about the UAP report. So this is their their forward facing view of this is how we wanted the public to view us after this report came out. So it's important stuff. Yeah, and that goes right along what we keep talking about is there is a narrative for this subject and it's in full control of the US government. John, thank you so much for another great great uh, unbiased UFO report. We'll talk to you in a couple nights. Thank you much sir. Have a good evening. Here we go.